booktube welcome back to the channel it's been a while but i'm very glad to be back and getting back into the swing of things um i figured i would start coming back here with my uh little end table book chats uh, people seem to have really liked those and they tend to be the most fun videos for me to make so figured why not start off on a very good foot with that so here this is a pretty astronomical a book pile, I guess. Um, some of them I've read, some I'm currently reading, and then the last few here, few in air quotes, are ones I'm thinking of reading next. So let's just get right into it. Uh, one of the most recent books I finished here is from Foreign Languages Press, and this is uh, Cisson's Basic Principles of Marxism Leninism, a Primer. And this as well as the MLM Basic Course Revised Edition, also published by Foreign Languages Press, are really great companions. This was really, really quick. This went into a bit more depth in places where the basic course didn't. So just another reason why those are such complimentary works. So this was a really good one. Next here is a pretty controversial book, uh, <laughs> to say the least. I personally loved it, absolutely loved it, uh, so much that I'm planning to do a review on this, so stay, stay tuned for it if you're interested. But this is In Defense of Looting by Vicki Osterweil, uh, A Riotous History of Uncivil Action, and woo, her source material in here gave me life, of which uh, I picked a few things in here in this pile. <laughs> either that I'm currently reading or want to read that were featured uh, quite extensively in this work. And, and there are also quite a few that I have read. Um, I was really intrigued to see that she cited uh, Jay Sakai throughout this book. That was a really pleasant <laughs> surprise. But I, I will read a, a review from a writer that I really admire, and that's Zoe Samudzi, who co-wrote uh, As Black as Resistance. So she put a clear and damning indictment of the origins and evolution of property rights, race, and policing in the United States. Osterwild demands we not only overcome the respectability politics animating our desire for peaceful protests, but that we ambitiously work to abolish the racial capitalist logics at the heart of American empire. And yeah, this book was a really great work of history. And uh, I, I'm hoping she writes another book because if it's anything like this, I, I'm game for it. So that is In Defense of Looting. And now here are some books that we have all seen before <laughs> on, I think, even just this segment I do. So I'm not going to talk about them too much. Um, I was in a reading group, a Voxer reading group. Uh, we were reading the autobiography of Malcolm X. Um, the group has since finished the book, and I'm, uh, <laughs> well, let's just say I'm getting there. So, but this is my first time reading this, and we've had really engaging and extremely uh, thought-provoking conversations. So that's really uh, enriched this reading experience. So that's that's something I'm working on. Next here, I think I'm, I'm just about to the last chapter of Paulo Freire's Pedagogy of the Oppressed. Uh, this was a, a work I was not anticipating to be so challenging. It, it has not been an easy read, but uh, quite rewarding. And definitely, I think as I go over it more and more times, uh, I'll get something I didn't catch the time before. So that that's always good. And okay, this next book, uh, it's been for a long time out of print um it was extremely expensive if you did ever find a copy of it i mean either a couple hundred dollars to more um there is a publisher i'm spacing on it i'm sure i'll put something up uh, who does have a hard and soft cover edition of this but it was still a little out of my range until uh, lulu uh, which is like a like a self-publishing type of deal. I'm not quite sure what Lulu is, um, but they had it. They had this Black Bolshevik, uh, an autobiography of an Afro-American communist 
by Harry Haywood for $16.99 or something like that. I about shit a brick. So I've been looking for this for years and it's finally here. So I'm, uh, this book is big. It is like 650 pages, this edition. I'm only like 50 pages in, but I'm really living <laughs> for autobiographies and stuff this year. It's It's been great. And this is one that I've been anticipating quite heavily. And I'll just read you guys the back here since it's pretty short. Black Bolshevik is the whirlwind story of an incredible life. As a black communist organizer in the 1920s through the 1950s, Harry Haywood saw the rise of the Soviet Union to a global power, fought fascists in Spain, and helped shift the line of the entire Communist Party towards one of national self-determination for the oppressed black people of the United States. His riveting and readable autobiography should be required for any communist today, both for his first-hand accounts of our communist history, but also for his still relevant, still necessary insights about organizing race and the struggle for a better world. And uh, this came from Lulu, but on the back it says uh, the Proletarian Information Bureau 2020, of which uh, I, I don't know what that is, so I need to look into that. But yeah, I finally got Black Bolshevik. Now, if if somebody can print Leila Khalid's autobiography, that would be that would be amazing because her book is even harder to find. So that's well I also started this I started this is a bind up of James Baldwin's later novels I just I just started If Beale Street Could Talk and I've been wanting to see the movie and usually I see the movie first before I read so I'm trying it the other way around but I have been loving the soundtrack it is absolutely gorgeous so yeah I'm also reading If Beale Street Could Talk and now here are some books that I haven't started yet. Some I think we have seen and others we haven't, but that I'm planning to read soon, at least hopefully, you know, nothing set in stone on this channel. Um, first off is Robin D.G. Kelly's Freedom Dreams, The Black Radical Imagination. And I mean, Robin D.G. Kelly is a pretty well-known name in like Africana and Black Studies I mean, he, it seems that he writes the foreword or introduction for everybody under the sun. Uh, <laughs> and I haven't read any work of his yet. So I, I need to get onto that. So I believe this is the only Kelly book I have right now. I really want to get his work Hammer and Ho. So if anybody's read that, please let me know because I've heard amazing things about that. Uh, next here is... Uh, Tiffany Lethabo King's The Black Shoals, Offshore Formations of Black and Indigenous Studies, or excuse me, in Native Studies. And uh, the back here explains this better than I could. Uh, in The Black Shoals, King uses the shoal, an offshore geologic formation that is neither land nor sea, as metaphor, mode of critique, and methodology to theorize the encounter between Black Studies and Native Studies. King conceptualizes the shoal as a space where Black and Native literary traditions, politics, theory, critique, and art meet in productive, shifting, and in contentious ways. These interactions, which often foreground Black and Native discourses of conquest and critiques of humanism, offer alternative insights into understanding how slavery, anti-Blackness, and Indigenous genocide structure white supremacy. And there's more to it, but I think that gives you kind of the gist and I picked this up not only for uh, the content, but also because I have a ton of Duke University press books that I haven't read yet. And they're currently having a sale now. And I was able to get a few from there. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll elaborate on that more later when they get here. But this is one of the Duke University press books that's on like the top of my list to read. Next here, um, we have... Elaine Brown's A Taste of Power. I believe I've talked about this. Uh, we're continuing on with the autobiography theme. Uh, it's pretty essential reading for me for obvious reasons. So I had to throw that in. And we're keeping with the thematic themes here too. Uh, Radio Free Dixie, Robert F. Williams and the Roots of Black Power by Timothy B. Tyson. Uh, quite a few people have told me this is really great. 
Um, I believe this was cited quite a bit in In Defense of Looting when Osterwa was talking about um, armed self-defense during the civil rights movement and the Black Power movements and kind of demystifying the false dichotomy between the two that, you know, one was one was purely nonviolent and the other was purely violent. Uh, Robert F. Williams' story, as, many, as well as many others, tell a very different tale about how guns made the civil rights movement even possible. And so I got to get to this. And lastly, but certainly not least, is Black Against Empire, The History and Politics of the Black Panther Party by Joshua Bloom and Waldo E. Martin Jr. Um, just trying to get caught up with my Black Panther stuff and being in that reading group uh, for the Malcolm X book, um, something I, I kept kind of referring to uh, is suggesting uh, searching out and understanding the history of the Black Panther Party I feel like a lot of like what Malcolm's politics and calls were were responded to in the Black Panther Party. And I feel like, especially if you're like new to understanding Malcolm X, uh, reading his speeches and looking at his legacy past his life, I feel like only enriches your understanding of what he was about and how he was part of a much larger movement itself. So... Yeah, I have quite a few things, you know, as per usual, because I'm always ambitious. <laughs> quite a few things I want to read, quite a few things I am reading, and there were a handful of things I did finish that I felt were worth noting. So, like I said, I got a ton of projects underway. Uh, quite a few are coming to a head, so look forward to those uploads here. Um, like I said, I'm getting finally back into the swing of things. I'm, I'm learning to be able to manage certain things I wasn't able to this year and had a really hard time with. So I'm very glad to be back here, you guys. Um, you know, so say howdy in the comments and uh, I'll catch you guys soon. Peace.